Hallelujah. How many feel faith in the building this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith in one another would be great, but I've got faith in him. Hallelujah. Paul said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think. Amen. Whatever your obstacle this morning, by faith in him, I believe you can overcome. Hallelujah. If God intends for you to be an overcomer and you believe it, say amen. amen. I believe that. I believe we ought to walk in victory, don't you? Hallelujah. Take your Bibles with me this morning if you'd like to read along and uh, one verse of scripture, Jonah chapter number three. Just one verse of scripture, Jonah chapter number three and verse number one. Jonah 3 and 1. If you have it, say amen. If you need us to wait, say it, hold on. You don't want to seem unspiritual that you don't know where Jonah is in the Bible. Page 758 in my Bible. Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Go left, go left. And, and the word and the large print Bible that Brother Morgan has, he said it's page eight forty nine. So, <laughs> Jonah three and one. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Notice that. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Somebody say second. The second time. I want to preach to you this morning on the gospel of a second chance. I almost called it the gospel of an etch-a-sketch because I have an etch-a-sketch this morning that I'd like to preach with. But my text this morning is very, very simple. And my thought and my message is simple as well. And I just like to remind everybody that we're serving a God of second chances. Matter of fact, second chances renewed over and over again in my life and probably your life as well. Amen. How many glad that God gives us a second chance? Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you're seated this morning. It really is hard probably to wrap our minds around the completeness of this little little Bible verse and it's my desire to spend our time together to, to talk about the lesson that is found in this verse of scripture, the gospel of a second chance. Really, you know, almost in nature you never get a second chance. If you think about it, very rarely do you ever get to start things over again. An opportunity to clean, the sl to clean the slate is seemingly never found. Once things happen, it seems that they're etched in stone, and how do you ever get to start over? You can think about your life, you can think about relationships, you can think about failures and shortcomings and disappointments. How do you start over once things are moving in a direction that you don't enjoy or you never even intended to go. It's hard to clean the slate in life. But if we find anything from the word of the Lord, and it's my desire this morning to allow this message to speak to you, and that is that we're serving a God of second chances. And so uh, possibly those that may be somewhat dispirited or discouraged, uh, maybe even despondent, I pray that this passage, this scripture, uh, inspires a belief in our heart and in our spirit that God is interested in you and I in a second chance. Uh, as a teenager, there was a song that the overcomer sang that really uh, that, that became so uh, valuable to me, and, that's, and the choir sings it here sometimes too, I'll be up again. I'll be up again. If, if, if you know me very well or not, I don't remember words to songs very, very good. Sister Robin confessed, but I, I must confess, I didn't even know she made words up Wednesday night to the song. I, she's, she's definitely related to Mark. I mean, anytime you can make, you know, it's a gift, right, to, to, to be able to do that. But I, I don't remember the words 
to songs. I just kind of hum along and I get words and you can ask my wife. It, no, that's not the verse. That goes with the other song. Well, it, it just whatever. But I'll be up again. Just you wait and see. Life won't keep me down. That song and those words stayed with me. And I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've never failed the Lord or never, maybe you've never made a mistake on God. But for me, the message of the prophet when he said, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise became relevant to my life because I, I, I'd i love to say that I've never made any mistakes, but the fact of the matter is, and in all honesty, we've all made mistakes, but I'm glad that I got back up and I want to finish the race. Amen. And, and I'm glad that I can sing, I'll be up again. Amen. How many, how many glad for the, the God of a second chance? That, that if it was one chance and done, it'd be kind of quiet in the house. It'd probably be empty in the house of the Lord this morning. You know, in Christmas of 1960, there was a toy that was released from the Ohio Art Company. Uh, it was uh, in conjunction with a, uh, a French engineer. Uh, it was a toy that hit the shelves in 1960 that allowed you through um, dual controls or joysticks to be able to uh, draw on a screen out of aluminum powder. It had different names, but it became known as the Etch-a-Sketch. How many have owned an Etch-a-Sketch? How many have used an Etch-a-Sketch? How many knows what an Etch-a-Sketch is? I didn't even know if they had toys in 1960, but, but they did. And one of those was an Etch-a-Sketch. And the thing about an Etch-a-Sketch is this. It's easy to mess up. It's not easy to draw on an Etch-a-Sketch. And the greatest thing about an Etch-a-Sketch is not that it passes time as you travel down the road, but the greatest thing about an Etch-a-Sketch is what? For those of us that are not artistically advanced, like some of you, with an Etch-a-Sketch, it's pretty much lines and diagonals. I figured out a few days this week how you can do some diagonals and some different stuff. I'm not going to show you and, and show out this morning for you how, how, how I've perfected the Etch-a-Sketch, but the greatest thing on an Etch-a-Sketch is this. That simply with just the move of that powder and a little bit of time, it is easy to erase the screen and you have a clean slate and you can start over. I'm glad Jonah is a Bible character that we can preach about because his life was much like that. It starts with a lot of potential, a lot of direction from the Lord and clear cut uh, vision from God, what God wants to do in his life. But in my text in the third chapter and the first verse, we find God speaking again to Jonah. Why the importance of God speaking the, the second time to Jonah? Because the first time Jonah got things messed up. The first time uh, Jonah gets too much of Jonah in the way and not enough God in his life and he winds up in a very bad, discouraged, defeated state like maybe some of us are here this morning. But God is not done with him. God is not ready to cast him aside and forget about Jonah's life. But the word of the Lord comes again the second time to Jonah and how Jonah must have been thrilled to know that God was not done with him with him. Now I don't want to overlook the fact that Jonah failed God and he had to grow and mature in God and you can't just do anything that you want and never suffer any consequences. There are consequences to sin and when we make wrong decisions we have to suffer and live and take responsibility for the decisions that we make. But that notwithstanding, thank God for the grace of the Lord that when we, when we put some things on life and we make some decisions we don't like we can come back to the altar in prayer and, and we can just ask God to allow the grace of God and the love of God to be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost and I believe that we can leave as new creatures in 
Christ Jesus. If you would, we can clean the slate before the Lord. That our past and our wrongs and our failures are just that. It is our past. It's not our present. And thank God, it does not have to be our future as well. Because the Bible teaches us that our sins are as far as the east is from the west. Aren't you glad this morning for the forgiveness that we can find in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But you know, there are many, many people in the Bible that had to have a second chance. I thought about Abraham this week in his, in his moment of trial. Abraham tried to lie his way out of trial and he failed God. David put in dire circumstances, some by his own choosing, compromised and failed God miserably. Peter, the great apostle and missionary and preacher of the gospel, denied the Lord in the midst of life's most uh, temptuous moments and he failed God miserably. John Mark, he failed God. He, he, he cowardice rose up in his heart and he retreated from serving the Lord. Even Moses, that great patriarch of the Old Testament, in the heat of the moment, not only became a, a failure, but a murderer in the sight of the Lord. But yet each one of these men, Abraham, David, Peter, Mark, and Moses, we say this morning recovered, uh, had a second chance, and today we use them as examples that you can overcome by the grace of God. Uh, and it is only the devil that tries to take our failures uh, and, to, and, and to beat us up with them and tell us we can never do better and we can never overcome. Uh, but the word of the Lord says this, uh, that if old things are passed away, what? Then all things are become new. When? If any man therefore be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature, and old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Thank God this morning uh, that you notice the author of the text, uh, that it was the word of the Lord uh, that came to Jonah. It was God that authored this message. Uh, it was God that sent word to Jonah, and God saying and authoring a message, uh, I'm not done with you. Uh, I'm not through with you. Uh, yeah, you made some bad choices in the first couple of chapters uh, and you've got out of my will and you've done some things and you paid the price. Uh, but there Jonah is uh, in a defeated state, in a discouraged state, failing uh, the grace of God. Uh, but thundering down through his conscience uh, is the Word of God uh, and the Word of God the second time. Uh, how Jonah must have got thrilled uh, to know that God God was not done with him. How he must have been thrilled to hear the word of God begin to speak to him a second time and giving him another opportunity to serve God and please God. Hear me this morning. I really feel like I'm on assignment from the Lord. Amen. To deliver a message to you. More than my message or words of a song. Amen. I believe God speaks to us this morning. Amen. That God tells us he is a God of an everlasting love. He's a God that we can find forgiveness. Amen. Even the disciples did not understand the forgiveness of the Lord. They wanted to measure it on a hand and say how many times should we forgive each other? And the Lord said 70 times 7. Amen. His forgiveness is everlasting. It is enduring. Whatever the situation in life, whatever the failure, whatever the circumstance, whatever the problem. Amen. I believe there's grace of God God, uh, to reach down to our life. Uh, amen. And just shake it and say, I tell you what. Uh, amen. I'm going to let you start over. Uh, amen. I'm going to let you have a clean slate. Uh, oh, I celebrate the fact in God this morning. Uh, amen. For the power of the forgiveness uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Even Onesimus in the New Testament, uh, who was a thief, uh, who was one that really could have been branded. You understand that? Uh, a Philemon could have branded him. By law, he he could have took his life uh, or he could have branded him as a thief uh, that all of his life Onesimus uh, would have had to walk around as a thief as one that was uh, 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 just covetous envious and, and a robber and a thief can you imagine living your whole life uh, everybody 
somebody knowing what you used to be, what you used to do, and you are a thief and have that branded upon your body. But oh, Paul wrote that letter and he began to talk about Philemon. I remember when you found the grace of Jesus Christ. I remember when I found the grace of God. And Onesimus as well has found the grace of God. Amen. And I urge you, if he owes you anything, put it on my account. But I want you to extend to him the grace of God that you've received from God as well. Amen. History records in the Bible and other places. Onesimus was not one that had to walk around with a sign or a mark or a scar. No, no, no. He even became one that was able to deliver letters for Paul. He became a missionary's friend. Amen. A couple centuries later, Amen. Onesimus, the name Onesimus in church history finds its way among some of the young people in the third century. He became a symbol. He became an example that you can overcome the mistakes of life. That regardless of who you are and what you've done and where you've been, you can make a trip to the altar and find the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why I don't like the theology that we're just sinners saved by grace. Amen. Follow me closely. Amen. Friend, I want you to know today that we are not just sinners saved by grace. Amen. That implies that I am what I was before conversion. To say that I'm a sinner saved by grace. That means when I get up from the altar of salvation, I'm the same person that I went down to the altar. And I don't believe that at all. I say a better theology is this. That we are saints saved by the grace of God. I don't want my previous life. I don't want my failures and my shortcomings. I don't want my children or anybody to remember that I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Amen. I don't claim to be perfect and I'm not trying to put you on a pedestal either. Amen. But John said if we sin, not when we sin. I don't believe we've got to sin every day in thought, word, or deed. Amen. But I believe when we find the forgiveness of Jesus Christ that if you're a drug addict, you don't want to be a drug addict anymore. That if you're a drunk, you don't want to be a drunk anymore. That if you're a liar, you don't want to lie anymore. If you're a robber, you don't steal anymore. If you're an adulterer, you don't lie around with another man's wife anymore. I said old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Oh, hallelujah. And God said, Jonah, I love you enough. I'm sending my word again. God authors this message and how it arrives into Jonah's life and it comes again. But I love the Bible teaches us that Jonah receives it. So Jonah arose and he went to Nineveh. Let me tell you today, what are you going to do with the message of God? What are you going to do with the forgiveness of Jesus Christ? Hey Amen. I don't well, I'll just draw a picture on there for me. We're not going to put it on eBay or anything. Just try to draw a picture on there. I guarantee now don't don't erase it. Don't erase it. Uh, amen. He, he's young and he probably sits around and plays with that. Just catches up. Uh, should have got an older person this morning. Uh, amen. But you know that's like life. Uh, amen. There's vertical knobs and horizontal lo- knobs. Uh, it's our relationship with God uh, and it's our relationship with others. Uh, amen. Sometimes we get out of whack vertically and then we got out of whack horizontally. Uh, it's a picture of our life. Uh, but old Jonah teaches us that God uh, gives us a second chance and I really like for the spirit of God this morning amen just to penetrate your heart maybe if you're sitting there a little bit discouraged maybe if you're just sitting there a little bit downhearted amen you're a little bit perplexed with where life has brought you and say you know I'm in a place where I never intended to be I'm in some relationships I never thought I'd be in I'm just in a place that I just don't know how to turn it around well I know what the devil will say he'll just tell you to give up. You've gone too far. You're hopeless. That's why I tell so many young folks you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. He just wants us to give up. And maybe your life is a little bit like this picture this morning. But I have absolutely no idea. Amen. I have no idea. Just a bunch of lines. A lot of bunch of mistakes. A lot of trying to go back and fix. And that's sometimes life. But I'm going to promise you this morning that if you can make a trip to the 
the grace of God uh, and find the forgiveness of the Lord uh, and hear the Spirit of God this morning. Uh, but he says, I make all things new. Uh, amen. Did he hear me this morning? Uh, the word of the Lord said, I make all things new. Uh, I make all things new. Uh, it may be relationships. Uh, it may be jobs. Uh, it might be your marriage. Uh, it might be children. Uh, it might be a relationship with God. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this morning, old Jonah's sitting there down discouraged uh, and ready to give up. Uh, failed the Lord. Uh, got swallowed by a whale. Uh, amen. Went down to the depths of the sea. Uh, winds up with a bunch of seaweed in his hair on the side of the seashore saying my life's a failure. Uh, how did I ever wind up here? Uh, and then piercing the darkness uh, comes a thunderbolt from heaven uh, and the word of the Lord come to Jonah a second time. Uh, hear me this morning. You're not a failure. Uh, I said you're not a failure. Uh, amen. Your life is not over. Uh, the devil, oh yes, he'll tell you that. Uh, but this morning, uh, the Spirit of God said, uh, I can give you a new slate. Uh, I can wash away. Uh, I can make it clean. Uh, I can wash mistakes away. Uh, I can wash failures away. Uh, I can wash hurts away. Uh, I can wash sorrows away. Uh, I can wash failures away. Uh, I can wash bitterness away. Uh, I can wash addictions away. Uh, I can wash sins away. Uh, I can wash mistakes away. Uh, I said, I'll make all things new, saith the Lord. If we receive it. If we receive it. How many of this morning? We're going to close this service with prayer in just a moment. That you want to, you want to be prayed for. And I don't, I don't need to know what the lines represent. I don't need to know what the mistakes are. I just come to preach this morning. That's the good thing about an Etch-a-Sketch. That's the good thing about it. It's a clean slate. David, oh yeah, David. David made some bad mistakes. But in Psalms 51, create in me a clean heart. Woo! And God let him keep writing Psalms. God let him. Peter denied the Lord. He made some bad mistakes. Didn't even have enough courage to stand up in front of a little girl and defend Jesus Christ. He made some horrible mistakes. But he went out and he went before God and the grace of God and thrilled his life. And he stood up on the day of Pentecost and he said, Brethren, amen, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Amen, hear me young folks, even John Mark, uh, he made some mistakes. Uh, amen, Paul, uh, he said, man, he's not even fit for the gospel. Uh, that kid is useless. Uh, he's never going to amount to anything. Uh, but at the end of Paul's life, uh, he writes a la one of his last few words. Uh, and he said, tell John Mark to come. Uh, amen, tell him to come. Uh, he's profitable for the ministry. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, John Mark got in a closet of prayer. Uh, and he said, God, if you give me another chance. God, if you forgive me, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to preach. I'm going to declare. I'm going to work for you. Oh, hear me this morning. Who is it the Spirit of God speaks to? Who is it this morning that says, I need a second chance? And here I am. Here I am, God. I come to find the grace of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You believe God's into second chances? I said, do you believe God's into the second chances. Uh, why don't you stand to your feet uh, and just wave your arms this morning uh, and say, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for a second, a second chance. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn and tell half a dozen people God's in the second chances. I'll be up again. Just you wait and see. I'll be up again. I told you I'm not good with words. But I know the words to this one. Hallelujah. You know why? Because there was times as a young person. There was times that I had to go back to my closet. There were times that I had to find the grace of God. 
and began to speak to my soul these words uh, and say rejoice not against me O my enemy for when I fall I shall arise uh, I didn't mean to make the mistake uh, but I'm not going to let this be the final chapter uh, I'm not going to let this be the last moment uh, this is how I refuse to go out uh, I refuse to quit uh, I refuse to stop uh, I will get up uh, and that's what you need to do this morning uh, in the grace of God uh, the devil says I got you uh, the devil says I got you bound uh, but Jesus says uh, you can get up in the grace of God second time saying arise that's the second verse but verse number three the bible says jonah arose see i feel like the lord's delivered the message to you but now we got to get down to verse number three verse number one the word of the lord came verse number two the word of the lord spoke in verse number three he received so this morning i said we wanted to close this service with special prayer Wherever I'll you're at in life, you say, I just need the Lord. Just you wait and see. I just need God to erase some things. I need down. God just to give God me a clean slate. To my it might be a clean slate in your marriage. It might be a clean slate prayer. relationally or God with God. Will give I don't know. I really feel like the word of the Lord is here this morning to speak to you. So I want you to come and line up right here. We're going to pray for you. I want them to continue to sing. It may be one. It may be half a dozen. It does not matter to me. I just want you to hear from God. Hear what you need from the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, well, that takes a little brunch. I know it does. I know it does. I'm telling you, this is what God can do right here. Hallelujah. Telling me that there's no way to reach up to the Lord Hallelujah. Day. Hallelujah. I'll be up again. I'll be up again. Just you oh, wait I'm and see. Up, I'm getting up. I'm the getting up. The won't keep me Hallelujah. down. Hallelujah. They'll Brother. just send me Anyone to my knees. Anyone else this morning? Anybody else? And there while I'm in I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just telling you. I don't feel like the Lord's here to help this morning. I'll Hallelujah. Up again. Glory to God. Where I be Hallelujah. Lord. Glory to God, glory, glory to, to God. Amen, I'm going to be...